Hi there, my name's Conrad, and in this video, I'm going to explain the basic maths behind the stabilizer match move functions of the tracker node in Nuke. And I'll show you how you can build your own versions of these operations with an expression. In this video, we're talking about the 2D point tracker, not the camera tracker, although you can apply some of the ideas we will talk about to a camera as well. This is another example of where the maths behind an operation is much simpler than I first imagined, and by understanding it, it gave me confidence to learn more. You can use this knowledge to build on the basics and create variations of the process that aren't included in the default tracker node. The expressions in this tutorial are pretty simple, so it should be a good introduction, but if you have never used expressions before, you might want to watch my Introduction to Expressions videos first. The first thing we need to clarify is what kind of information the tracker is giving us. The point tracker gives us the position of the feature that it is tracking in screen space. That means it's giving us the X and Y coordinates of the object relative to the lower left corner of the format. As a quick example, let's move the tracker around this HD constant. Our HD format is 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels high. When the tracker is in the bottom left of the frame, we have a value of 0, 0. When we go to the bottom right, we get 1920, 0. And if we go to the top right, we get 1920 by 1080. So every pixel in our frame can be represented by a unique coordinate, where X represents the horizontal position and Y represents the vertical position. So let's track a single point of this shot. I'm going to track the top of this Lego minifigure's staff. To do that, we create a new tracker node, and then we hold Control or Command and Alt and click on our image to create a new tracker at the point that we clicked. Let's expand the tracker to include the whole blue tip of the staff. Now let's hit track in the viewer. As you can see, we get a pretty nice track. Let's look at the tracking data that we now have. The track underscore X and track underscore Y column next to the tracker name gives us the X and Y position of the tracker on every frame. So as the camera moves to the right, the object in the tracking data moves to the left. You can consider this raw tracking data. It's just giving us the absolute position of the object in the frame. If the element that we want to add to the shot is at 0, 0, like this color wheel, then we can use this position data as it is to match move it to the tip of the staff. We could just use the match move feature in the tracker node, but we want to understand how this is working, so let's set this up ourselves using a transform node and an expression. Let's create a transform node between the color wheel and the merge operation, and make sure that we have both the transform node and the tracker node open in the properties pane. Because our color wheel is at zero, then we can just add the values of the tracking data to its original position, and it will line up with the top of the staff. To do this, we need to create an expression in the transform node that links the translate properties directly to the values of the tracker. Referencing the data from a tracker isn't quite as simple as referencing most other knobs in Nuke, because there are several layers to drill down. Let's make it easy on ourselves and right click on the tracker that we want and choose copy, copy links. Now let's go to the translate properties on the transform node, click on the animation menu and choose paste, paste absolute. So now the translate in the transform matches the raw tracking data from the tracker. And if we look at the result of the merge node, now the color wheel sticks to the top of the staff as we play through the sequence. Let's examine the expression that was created in the transform node. We do that by clicking on the animation menu and choosing edit expression we can see that Nuke has added an expression to the X and Y knobs that links to the tracker in the tracker node. We have the name of the node, tracker1, then dot tracks that refers to the list of individual tracks, then dot one because we're using track1, and then dot track underscore X or dot track underscore Y to get the separate X and Y values. So because the color wheel started at zero, the raw tracking data moves it to match the thing that we were tracking. Let's label this transform node match move. Now let's look at stabilization. Stabilization is the opposite of match move. Instead of adding the tracking data to an object to give it the same movement as the thing that we tracked, we want to subtract the tracking data from the object that we tracked to lock it into a static position. We can do this by a simple adjustment to the setup that we just created. Let's copy and paste the transform node that we just made and change the label to stabilize. 
As it stands, this node is adding motion to the clip, but we want to subtract the motion. This is easy to fix. Let's go to the translate knob and choose edit expression. All we need to do to subtract the value is to add a minus symbol in front of the expression. Now we're using the translate node to subtract the position of the staff from the position of the image. This has the effect of moving the staff to 0, 0 on every frame and creating a stabilized version of the footage. Let's just recap the maths of what we're doing here. The tracker has the 2D position of the top of the staff on every frame. To match move something that is at 0, 0 already to the top of the staff, we just need to add the position of the staff in X to the X translate of the object and the position of the staff in Y to the Y translate of the object. To stabilize the tip of the staff around 0, 0, we need to subtract the position of the staff from the image. Because we are subtracting the position of the staff from itself, this will give us a result of 0. So the staff will be moved to the bottom left corner of the image on every frame. But in both these examples, we are limited to either moving something to or from the lower left corner of our format, which isn't very useful. The tracker node has a reference frame control. We use this to set the frame that we don't want to change, and then the match move or stabilize is applied relative to that frame. In the case of the stabilize, we can see that every other frame is moved to line up with the reference frame, which here we have set to frame 1. Let's add this feature to our stabilize. But before we do that, we need to think about what's actually going on. As it stands, our stabilized setup is subtracting the whole value of the track from the image on each frame, which moves the top of the staff to 0, 0. But we don't want to move it all of that way. We want to move the image so that the top of the staff stays in the same position that it's already in on frame 1, and then we want every other frame to move to match that. To do that, we need to calculate the difference between where it is on the current frame and where it was on frame 1. To calculate the difference, we need to subtract the value of the track on the current frame from the value of the track from frame 1. Let's go back to our shot and see how that works in practice. On frame 1, our tracker is telling us that the position of the staff is 1350 in X and 748 in Y. This is going to be our reference position that we want all of our other frames to match. If we move to frame 2, we see that the staff has moved to 1352.78 in X and 748.26 in Y, so it has moved 2.78 pixels to the right and 0.26 pixels up. We need to counteract that movement to stabilize the image, so we need to move the image 2.78 pixels to the left and 0.26 pixels down. And you'll see that if we take the equation we just saw, reference frame minus current frame, and enter the positions from frame 1 as our reference frame, and frame 2 our current frame, that those are the numbers we get as the result. So let's adjust the stabilize node that we've already created to add this feature. We need to change the expression, so choose Edit Expression from the Animation menu. First we need to delete the minus symbol from the front of the existing expression. Then we need to copy what we already have and then add a minus sign after that, and paste what we've just copied. And we need to do this for both the x and the y values. Now we are subtracting the tracking data from itself, which gives us a total value of 0 on every frame. This isn't moving the image to 0, 0, but not moving the image at all. That's not what we want. We need to subtract the position of the tracker on our current frame from the position of the tracker on the reference frame. In my introduction to expressions videos, we saw that to get the value of a knob from a certain frame, we add the frame number in parentheses after the section of the expression that is calling the value. In this case, we need the first half of our equation to always be equal to the reference frame, frame 1. So let's add a 1 in parentheses after the first instance of the expression. Now we have the position of the object on frame 1, and then we are subtracting the position of the object on the current frame. If we are on frame 1, this will give us a result of 0, so the image won't move anywhere. But once we move to another frame, we're calculating the difference between where it was on frame 1 and where it is now. Then we're subtracting that value from the current position, 
which will line it up with frame one. So if we hit play now, you can see that we have stabilized the sequence around the tip of the staff. That's pretty cool. But if we want to change our reference frame to frame 50, we have to do that by editing the expression. Let's click the animation menu and choose Edit Expression and replace the 1 with 50. Now, when we play our footage, we can see that on frame 50, our image matches the original plate, and all the other frames have been transformed to match that position. This is great, but having to change the expression every time we want to change the reference frame isn't very user friendly. It would be easier if we could enter our reference frame number into a knob on the node control panel, similar to how the tracker node works. So let's do that. First, we need to create the knob. Right click anywhere on an empty part of the transform nodes control panel and choose Manage User Knobs. This panel allows us to add new knobs to the node. Choose Add and select Integer Knob. An integer knob allows us to enter whole numbers. Now we need to define a few properties of the knob. The first property we need to give it is its name. This is the name that will be used to reference the knob by expressions, and will be the name that shows up when we hover the cursor over the knob like we did before. This name cannot have any spaces in. Let's call the knob ref underscore frame. The label is the text that is displayed next to the knob in the control panel. This should be a more human readable name for the user. Let's enter reference frame. The tooltip is optional and can be used to add additional text when the user hovers their cursor over the knob to explain what the knob does. Let's add, enter the frame number you want to base your stabilizer around. Now let's click OK. Nuke has now created a new tab in the control panel of the transform node and added this integer knob to it. If we hover our cursor over the new knob, we see the name and the tooltip. Let's set our knob to 50 to match the current reference frame. At the moment, this knob isn't actually doing anything. We need to attach it to our expression. Let's go back to the transform tab and choose edit expression again. We want to replace the hard coded frame number with the value coming from the new knob that we just created. So let's delete the 50 in the parentheses and type ref underscore frame, which was the name of our knob. Now the frame number for the reference frame is going to come from that new knob that we just created, which at the moment is set to 50, so the result of the expression won't have changed. Let's change the value in our new knob to 1 and jump to frame 1 in our timeline. We can see that our image is now stabilized around frame 1 again instead of frame 50. And now that we have created this new knob and hooked it up to our stabilized expression, we can change our reference frame easily without having to open the expression every time. Great. Let's use another expression to add a dynamic label to our node so that it displays the reference frame. Let's go to the node label and below the word stabilize, let's add ref frame colon and then open square brackets value space ref underscore frame close square brackets. The value ref frame in the square brackets will look up the value of the knob that we just created and display it as part of the sentence in the label. So now you can see that the reference frame, whenever we change it, is displayed on the label of the node. We've already seen that the maths behind a stabilize and a match move operation is very similar, but that the match move is an addition rather than a subtraction. So let's use what we have just learned and convert it into a match move node. Before we do that, let's set up the color wheel on our reference frame. Let's move our timeline to frame 100 and connect a transform node between the color wheel and the merge node and then move the color wheel so that it's positioned on the top of the tip of the staff. This will be our reference frame. Now let's create the match move. I'm going to delete the previous match move node that we created and copy and paste this stabilize node now that we've set up the expression and the custom knob. Let's open this new node and change the label to match move and open the expression. We need to change the result of this so that it gives us the opposite as before. To do this, we can reverse the subtraction. So instead of subtracting the current frame from the reference frame, we want to subtract the reference frame from the current frame. We can do that by removing the reference frame number from the first half of the equation and adding it to the second half of the equation. Now, we're still calculating the difference between the two frames, but 
if it was giving us a negative number before, it's going to give us a positive number now, and vice versa. We set up the color wheel on frame 100. So let's change the reference frame in this match move node to 100, and then connect the node between the existing transform node and the merge. Now when we play our footage, you can see that the color wheel is tracking to the tip of our staff. So there we have it. With very simple maths, we've created our own stabilize and match move nodes. Obviously, this is only based on the data from a single point tracker, and the tracker node has loads of options to combine multiple tracks to either get better results or to add scale and rotation to our transforms too. I don't expect anyone to actually build their own stabilized nodes just for the sake of it, but it's really useful to understand how the maths works, and in my next video I'll show you how we can build on this technique to have more subtle controls over the results, and to produce results that we can't actually do in the tracker node. To make sure you don't miss the next video, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to make sure you get notifications. If you have any questions or suggestions for other videos you'd like to see me do, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.